I V M. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 14th episode of the Sponge Podcast. I am with Ambi Parmeshwaran. As always, we're going to be discussing the 14th chapter of his book, Sponge Leadership Lessons I Learned from My Clients. This chapter is called Reading Smoke Signals. Uh, hi, Ambi. Hi. So this was interesting, right? I mean, like you're, you start your chapter off with a bang or rather with a decapitation, I guess. The uh, <laughs> client fires you for what I thought was probably the most tenuous or I don't even know if tenuous is the right word, right? The most kind of arbitrary reason I have ever heard. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, you know so Shuri, I think uh, we had uh, we had a small office in, uh, in Chennai and uh, I was running it and... Uh, we had the opportunity of a lifetime to launch uh, India's first private sector mutual fund. Mm-hmm. I think the year was exactly 25 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we worked literally tirelessly for three months, you know, every day, Saturday, Sundays included. Uh, we had roped in our team from Bombay to come and do the campaign for us. So, and I think, uh, you know, including giving names for the fund, which was Kotari Pioneer Prima, and Kothari Pioneer Blue Chip was the name which, you know, I'd suggested. Uh, the issue went off well, what they call uh, NPO today. You know, it's called uh, NFO, New Fund Offering. Okay. Uh, in this case, the company itself was new. Uh, it got oversubscribed. I mean, it, it it got its expected subscription. You can't say oversubscribed. Uh, and it did well. So we all thought we had done a great job. You know, I mean, campaign is a success. Brand has been established, you know. And I get a call from Vivek Reddy, who's the CEO, uh, saying, Ambi, I want to meet you. So I toodle across to meet him, thinking there's going to be uh, happiness and joy. Yes, there was happiness and joy. But then he said, hey, sorry, guy, you know, I don't think we can continue to work with you. Hmm. So, you know, I, I said, look, I think I thought we did a good job. So what's the problem? So he gave me some lame excuse, but uh, the crux of the matter was, you know, you provided too much service to us, you know, uh, <laughs> whereas we didn't expect this level of service. And uh, so we are planning to move our business to someone else. Um, that just seems uh, so strange. Yeah, it looked strange, right? I mean, why should you get sacked because of providing service? Yeah. So I, I thought it was just a, there was something else missing. Right. And that's when I started thinking that, you know, we had not understood the signals which are coming out. Hmm. Uh, we had not understood that, you know, there was a new marketing guy who was joining the company. He is an ex-advertising guy from another agency and he came with his own biases. Hmm. And we didn't realize this till it was too late and we should have tracked this earlier. Right. So in Chennai, when I met uh, Vivek Reddy a few months ago during my book launch, he said, no, 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 we didn't, uh, you know, actually we decided to go to a smaller agency. That's why we parted company with you. But I don't think that was true. Right. They went to a fairly large agency when they left us. And I think it was, I would say it was our mistake. So I don't think the reason was over-servicing. I think the reason was there was some chemistry missing. Right. And we didn't pick up the signal. Of what was going wrong. What was going wrong, you know. So it was a very valuable lesson, Hmm. you know. So that's interesting, right? I mean, like, uh, so you mentioned this idea that, uh, which comes up over and over again during this, uh, this chapter, that you must have contacts at multiple levels, right? Do you think that was what was missing over here? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think in this case, the entire relationship was between Vivek Reddy and me. Right. Uh, I was head head of the agency, Vivek Reddy was the CEO. The rest of the levels of the organization was disconnected. Right. You know, and, and I did not realize that at that stage. I thought everything was going very well, but there was smoke, you know, coming out of other parts of the organization, which, you know, I had not, uh, I had not realized. Right. So I think we deserved to get sacked and uh, that's what happened, unfortunately. Interesting. So uh, you mentioned this, there was another story as well that you were talking about, same kind of situation, well, not same kind of situation. In that case, it was pretty more obvious, right? The words used to you were, did you not read the smoke signals? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that was another case which happened much later, uh, all, you know. Uh, where we had uh, done fabulous work for this client and we had even won Effectiveness Award. You know, the, you know, the campaign was a talk of the town. Fantastic, you know. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, uh, the entire client chemistry, a client relationship was left to one guy mm. uh, who was our, you know, national creative director. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, the unfortunate truth is, I knew the MD of the company, my other colleagues knew other people in the company, but it suited everyone to just leave the entire relationship to the national credit, right. which we should not have done. Hmm. Okay. So when the client was parting company and I decided to then call uh, my friend to ask him, look, what happened? I thought right. we had done great work for you guys. So he said, yeah, but you know, I've been hearing that uh, my team has been unhappy with you. So hmm. I said, I don't know where you heard. So no, I'm sorry. So you, you have to realize that um, face to face, the team which is working with you on a day-to-day basis don't tell you negative things. Right. But when their bosses question them, why is the sales not coming? Or why is our market share dropping? Or why is our image score going down? Mm. Uh, they say, no, the campaign is not good. So, and then the guy say, look, uh, what are you doing about the agency? Mm. No, no, we brief the agency. They're going to do some new work. Mm. Uh, so you, you kind of get caught between, you know, many stools in this. So right. in, in this case... I don't think we deserve to get sacked. I think we misread the signals. Uh, when a client is undergoing financial distress, mm. uh, the agency has to walk up and talk to the CEO of the company right. and find out how they can uh, work better. It could be, you know, working on a lower fee or lowering the team or whatever. I mean, you you kind of cut the cloth depending on what, you know, thing you have. Right. So in this case, we completely missed it. We hmm. should have, you know, I kicked myself. I, I knew the MD very well. Right. Uh, I should have picked up the phone and talked to him six months before this whole thing blew up. Uh, so, you know, uh, it should not have happened. So I, therefore, in the chapter I talk about this, which is whether it is IT services, whether it is banking, whether it is advertising, any service industry, you have to have at least three levels of contact, mm. which is, there is of course the day-to-day team, which will be meeting with the front end. They'll be doing the work itself, right? I mean, like the actual operational. Yeah. So those guys have to be encouraged to keep meeting the client regularly and doing a good job and giving feedback. But we should also try and say, look, one level above, uh, do we know what's going on? Right. Right. Uh, so there has to be a parallel track happening with that one level above. And ideally, at a CEO level, right. uh, someone who's at a CEO level in the agency, right. uh, CXO level in the agency, has to get the time to go and meet the CEO of the client organization. Right. If you don't do that, you know you will not be able to pick up the smoke signal. Interesting. So you think that having the, is it redundancy, which is what we are trying to get over here, redundancy of communication, or is it just making sure that you hear from different problems at, or from different levels of different problems? Uh, I, I think it's a bit of both. Okay. Uh, I think uh, what happens in organizations is everyone is doing a CYA. Hmm. So come under pressure, the frontline team may say, oh, well, we briefed uh, the agency and they didn't deliver anything good. Whereas to the agency, they may be saying, yeah, this is okay. Right. But my boss is giving me a hard time. You know, how can sales improve with advertising? He doesn't know. Hmm. Whereas to the boss, he'll say, no, sir, we briefed the agency. They didn't deliver anything good enough. So there is always a lot of missed communication between a client and an agency. Hmm. And, and if you don't maintain this kind of parallel dialogue going, you're not going to be able to manage this. You know, even in a, you know, at home, for example, a kid... The mom and the dad have to play two different roles. Right. Right. If both of them shout at the kid, the kid is, you know, going to rebel. Whereas even at home, you know, um, there has to be one soft, you know, playing good cop, bad cop. Someone right, has right. to play good cop, someone has to play bad cop, you know. So same thing with clients, you know. I mean, sometimes, you know, the frontline team may be fighting like hell right. with the frontline team. And then the senior guy will go and tell the guy, look, don't worry, our team is fighting. Okay, let them resolve it. If they don't resolve it, I will do something. Right. Worst comes to me, I'll change my team. Right. Right. And the boss says, yeah, okay, that, I understand that. Yeah. But don't let it get out of hand yeah. because, you know, it seems for two months, you know, you guys have been fighting, no campaign is coming out and my team is sick and tired of your team. So if you turn around and say, yeah, I know that. Right. But there is a reason why these guys are fighting. It diffuses the situation. Yeah. And, and I'll have something else ready for you. Don't right. worry. Yeah. 
So, so you know, the whole situation changes. And yeah. that's, that's important. That's interesting. You know, I mean, that, that kind of brings up this idea that you mentioned in the book as well, right? This idea that there is a life cycle to any agency-client relationship uh, and that there are uh, essentially three stages of that life, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was very fascinating. It really spoke to me like as somebody who used to run an IT services business, right? I mean, like, I feel like we had the same kind of life cycle in how we used to deal with it. Do you want to tell people a little yeah, bit about that? Uh, absolutely. You know, it, it, this life cycle thing applies to everything in life, yeah. uh, Amit. So, <laughs> uh, you know, the same thing applies to romance, right? The way you right. uh, woo a girl uh, will be different from the way you live with her. Right. And then you, how do you monitor your, your level of life, right? Right. So even in advertising uh, or in IT services, what you do to pitch and win a business is different. Right. So during the pitch, you need to have drama, you need to have some theatrics, you need to uh, razzle and dazzle the client to get the client. Right. Okay. Once you got the client, then marriage starts. And you're really taking this romance metaphor far, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I know, but after, you know, you're, you've done all the razzle-dazzle after that romance starts. Someone has to wash the dishes. Someone has to cook. So you can't, you know, every day bring bouquet and chocolates and the wa- dishes are not going to wash themselves. Right. Right. And the, the, you know, onions are not going to cut themselves. So someone has to cry and cut the onions and stuff like that. Right. So then there is, you know, the first stage is razzle-dazzle. Then there is work, you know, right. when you have to do the work. Right. The third stage is you have to also keep track of how are you living with your client. Right. Uh, There's this old saying, right? Uh, when is the last time you said I love you to your wife? Hmm. Right. Are you getting enough love use from your client? Are you telling your client you care for the client? Right. You know that, that you really care for them? So if you're not getting those signals, you know you're going to have a problem. Right. And, and people say that, you know, uh, good creatives wins you the business. Hmm. Bad relationship loses you the business. Right. Right. You may do great work, but if the relationship is bad, yeah, no, if you can't get bad. along, if it's constantly heartburn for both sides, where there right. are constant arguments going on, no matter what, there's a distinct uh, difference in terms of how you see things moving forward. Then I mean, like, yeah, that just is not going to work. Absolutely. So you're going to you're going to lose the you know you, you're going to win a client for one set of reasons. You're going to lose a client for another set of reasons. Right. You've got to be clear about that. Yeah. And one way of making sure that you understand how the relationship is progressing is what I call the the three level uh, right. relationship. Ah. Uh, and so I say, look, the team probably meets the client every week. The one level above should meet the somewhat senior person at least every month. Right. And at the CXO level, the meeting should happen at least once in two months, if not once in three months. Right. And it should be clear. This should not be done, you know, chupa chupi and all that. The right. company should know. That the CXO and the CEO will meet. Right. They will meet once in two months. They will discuss the earth. They will discuss the rotational axis of the earth, the government, the economy. But they will also discuss work. Right. Uh, and everyone knows that. So you mentioned something. I think this was in the chapter as well, right? That uh, the marketing manager uh, will be unhappy if you are meeting, if the CEO is meeting with the CXO of the agency, right? Without the marketing manager. Why Why do you think that is the case, right? Why do you think that there is a sense of, uh, do you think that's just the way corporate structures are that that creates this sense of insecurity? Or why do you think that there would be? No, no. so there is general sense of insecurity because you go and, you know, I'm dealing with you on a day-to-day basis, but your boss goes and meets my boss. Right. So I'll ask you, you know, why did your boss go and meet my boss? Hmm. So is he going to complain about me? So you got to make it clear. Look, boss, they have a relationship going back 20 years. Right. They meet, they discuss anything. Yeah. They may be discussing, you know, uh, United States. They may be discussing the dollar rates. Both their children are of, you know, are in the US. They'll be discussing that. I don't know. Right. I can't control my boss. Right, right, right. The question is then, why don't you tell your boss to not to meet my boss? Oh. But I don't think that uh, that's going to happen on either side, yeah, right? So, so both the bosses meeting because both of them want to meet. Right. So they discuss everything. So it has been said very clearly, look, I am not going into that meeting, right? Just as you should not go into that meeting. Right. Let them meet, you know, let them discuss whatever it is. Yeah, I think that makes sense, right? I think that that's the, again, how do you maintain that multi-level contact if you don't actually have yeah, multi-level? If you, do, you know, multi-level contact means the other level is not sitting in the room. Yeah. If the other level is sitting in the room, that's a waste of time. Right. Right. You've got to have each level has to sit with their level. Right. The moment multiple levels are sitting together, then there'll be all kinds of, you know, game. No, play. because then, yeah, exactly. Then uh, yeah, people are uh, yeah. showing something for something. And, yeah. The yeah. only way for you to pick up smoke signals is that your teams have to be sensitive for smoke signals. Right. And you have to have a multiple level contact 
so he can pick up signals at various stages and that's what this chapter talks about and i think that's a great place to end this chapter thank you and uh, thank you and with that we shall be back next week with the 15th chapter of the book which is architects and pillars thank you ambi thank you advertising is dead yep you heard me right advertising is dead we're all in the content business now Let's not call it news, TV, radio, etc., etc. It's all content, and we're in the middle of this weirdly exciting phase where all the borders and lines that have been drawn over decades has been swept away by this lovely thing called the internet. We're a show where we don't dwell on just the stuff that is now, but rather the wider stuff about advertising, media, content, and the whole goddamn circus surrounding it. Tune in every Tuesday for our weekly unboxing of the mystery box we used to call advertising. I'm Varun Dugirala, co-founder and content chief at The Glitch, and this is my new podcast, Advertising is Dead. माणसं ना गोल गप्प्यासारखी असतात हाय हॅलो करताना वेगळी आणि बोलताना वेगळी आणि गप्पा मारताना वेगळी मित्र झाली की वेगळी आणि शत्रू म्हणून वेगळी थोडक्यात दिसणारी वेगळी आणि असणारी वेगळी कधी आंबट कधी गोड कधी तिखट तर कधी चमचमीत आणि कधी कधी हॉट अँड स्पायसी सुद्धा आणि म्हणूनच गप्पा सॉरी सॉरी गोल गप्पा विथ तृप्ती खामकर फक्त तुमच्यासाठी दर बुधवारी आय व्ही एम पॉडकास्टच्या ऍप वर वेबसाईट वर किंवा युट्यूब चॅनल वर सुद्धा ऐकू शकता तुम्ही आमचा पॉडकास्ट वेगवेगळ्या पॉडकास्ट प्लॅटफॉर्म वरती ऐकू शकता फक्त सर्च करा गोल गप्पा विथ तृप्ती खामकर आणि आमचा पॉडकास्ट ऐकत राहा